All right, so this is case numbers uh, SS2430002 and RZ2404023, AKA 5521 Beta Avenue. Uh, tonight we have Chief Planner Jason Sorensen. We also have uh, Chief Planner Jim Resta and we have Commissioner Wilson over here. <laughs> sorry. I'm multitasking poorly, sorry. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. <laughs> so this community meeting is intended to provide you with information about the subject property and the request, including future land use designation information, uh, the current and proposed zoning district, and you will also be able to ask questions and give comments at the end of the presentation. So obviously this is your commissioner. <laughs> Once again, thank you for being here. <laughs> yes. Uh, her email is district1 at ocfl.net. No, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get into what is future land use. Uh, so here's a general overview. Every property in the county has a future land use map designation. This designation tells us the general use or long-term vision for a property and regulates the type of uses or development that may be considered. Future land use map designations also identify the maximum residential density of a property or the number of units allowed per acre, as well as the maximum amount of non-residential square footage allowed for a property. Similar to future land use, every property in the county also has a zoning district. However, zoning districts are more descriptive in that in addition to the types of uses and activities that um, can be considered on a property. It also addresses building size, setbacks, height, access, and parking requirements. Zoning districts must be consistent with the future land use. Here's an overview of the request the applicant has applied to change the future land use designation from rural settlement one to five to rural settlement one to two for allow the lot to be split and one additional home could be built on this property. The rezoning request is to ensure that the lot will be split or the lot split will not allow for a lot smaller than two acres. So the subject property is obviously in District 1. The underlying future land use designation right now is uh, rural settlement 1 to 1, or I'm sorry, 1 to 5, which allows for the consideration of one unit per five acres. So this is a map of the overall Lake Avalon Rural Settlement. So you can see the subject property is in red right down there. We just kind of wanted to show um, how much the rural settlement is one to five versus um, other future land use designations and the lighter greens. The proposed future land use is rural settlement one to two, which allows for the consideration of one unit per two acres. Uh, the current zoning is A1, which allows for half acre lots. And the proposed zoning is restricted A1 to ensure that a home will not be built on less than two acres because the A1 zoning designation does allow for half acre lots. Uh, as shown on the aerial map, the area surrounding the subject property consists primarily of single family homes. And then to the south is um, Orange County owned land. This is the process that uh, both of these applications are currently going through. So the future land use map is being addressed by the small scale land use map amendment. And then the zoning is gonna be that restricted A1 um, handled with the rezoning request and that number right there. Next up is the planning and zoning public hearing, which is going to be on April 18th um, down in downtown at the county administration building. I'll have more information on that in a second. There we go. So here's all the information on the Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing date. Um, these hearings are held in the commission chambers in the County Administration Building located at 201 South Roslyn Avenue in Orlando. Um, if you received a mailed notice, which we did do the entire rural settlement, so we will be doing that again for these notices. And then if you would like, you can reach out to obviously Commissioner Wilson, but they do all make the decision together. So please reach out to um, all the other commissioners as well as the mayor. And that is it for my presentation. Um, I wanna see, do the applicants have anything to add? Or if we wanna get right into questions and comments. What is the current zoning? It's A1, so that allows for half acre lots. So we're proposing to do a rezoning to make it A1 restricted. Yes. Yeah, all the, I can go back. All the zoning around it is also A1, but we wanna restrict it so that it has to be a two acre lot. 
Yeah. I think it would be helpful if you explain the difference between the future land use at one five. Yes. And the zoning at half acre to one, because there's going to be a lot of confusion out here. Yeah. About which one of those takes priority? Yes. So the future land use is the density. So we're going to start there. So. Right now, it is one to five. You can only build one home per five acres. But the zoning, which is more specific, allows for half acre lots. So you could have, you know, a five acre piece of property like this one and build a house just on half an acre in the corner. So what we're going to do, since they want to go to one to two, we want to make sure they're not going to have, you know, a four acre property on one side and then just one acre with one house because they're allowed to do that technically under the A1. Did that clear it up or I could? No. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> gotcha. In our community, nobody's mm -hmm. allowed to just build on a half acre. No, I understand that. But what we're trying to do, the density is what allows for homes to be built. Or I mean, how many homes you can build on one property. So if it's down to one to two, they are allowed to build on just one side of it. So it could be just a small lot. Obviously, no one has done that, and that's why we're trying to keep the integrity of the neighborhood and the rural settlement by restricting it to two acres. Yes, but they're applying to change it to one to two. No, no, no. That zoning district allows to build on half an acre. In our yes. So if most of the rural settlement is... It doesn't mean that's the norm, but... If most of the rural settlement is all A1, even though everybody's yes. one for five? So, yes. So we're all going to build a home on a half an acre. That's not going to happen. The whole issue of the rural settlement is, is to be predominantly one home for five acres. This already has one home for five acres. That house has been there for... 30 years. So now all of a sudden they want to split it off and sell a lot uh, like what everybody else has been trying to do and we'll totally degrade the rural settlement. And we're going to end up like the Windry, West Windermere rural settlement that you can't even see as a rural settlement because there's an Aldi and, a, and a, a Windermere High School and you would never even believe you're in a rural settlement. And we're desperately trying to protect what we have and not make any Main changes to the one home per five acre and become a, a more of an urban development than a rural settlement. Yes, sorry, one moment. I do want to point out that around them is rural settlement one to two, so that neighborhood does have some similar around them. Well, yeah, that was grandfather and another mm -hmm. so. Sorry, she had a question over here, I believe. No, I didn't want to, uh, I don't have a question, I wanted to make a statement. Yes. So, yeah. Sorry, we try to record this so that if anybody couldn't make it, they'd have the ability to, to come back and, and watch our recording of it. So I am gonna, <laughs> I am gonna grab the mic yeah, and let um, the question be on the mic, and that way, after you're done, that if anybody else does, I can pretend to be like a talk show host and run over to you, and we can <laughs> yes, hopefully can capture. Can you uh, just the hold this for me then too? Yeah. What, yes. Yes. What is it? Uh, I think what it's is your name, I and could you please? Uh, uh, Lori Forrester. I am in the Lake Avalon Rural Settlement. So the one thing that I continue to try to get folks to know and understand, our rural settlement is different than any other rural settlement in Orange County. And why I say that is because 2.4.5 of our ordinance to become the Lake Avalon Rural Settlement, it states that the predominant designation shall be one to five to reflect the existing development pattern, okay? Now, predominant is, meaning, as far as parcels, the greater number of parcels must be one to five, okay? It is not, currently it is not. I spent two days and more than 12 hours pulling up every single parcel in our rural settlement on the property appraiser's website, writing down the exact acreage. Here's the scary thing. Of all the parcels we have in here, less than five acres represents 342 parcels. Greater than five acres is 96 parcels. If 
because I know how you guys like to go, oh no, it's land mass. I took all the land mass of the greater parcels, okay? Now, I excluded the landfill. I excluded the churches. I excluded the rib fields. All right, so anything that, you know, Duke Energy's power plant, those are gone. I'm not counting those because those are not gonna be split, okay? So what I did, my fabulous little analysis, and the reality is that if everybody that had an eligible parcel to split the parcel, technically, you know, we can do nine acres or greater, that would mean that there would be 135 acre parcels in our rural settlement. That is still substantially less than 342 parcels. We are the only rural settlement that says our predominance must be one to five. So to turn around and tell me that you're going to take a predominance of one to five per se, plus or minus because it's 4.98, and turn it into one to two is a major issue with all of us. Number two, you will set a precedent that we will never recover from if this is approved. Because every single person is going to take this if it gets approved, and I hope it gets shut down. But should this get approved, we will no longer be able to have the same quality and character of our rural settlement because no one will be able to stop the next request and the next request and the next request because you will have set a precedent. And don't tell me, because I don't want to hear it, oh no, we're going to look at these individually. You do not look at them individually because this parcel has some two acres, but right next door there's a five acre parcel immediately next door, an 80 a 77 acre parcel, an 88 acre parcel, an 86 acre. So you only have a couple of two acre parcels surrounding that one individual parcel. So as you can even see, that dark green, all that dark green is one to five. So you're showing it directly here that at least a half of that parcel is on one to five, not one to two. This should not even be a gleam or a glimmer in someone's eye. And the other thing I want to say is anything in Orange County that is two acres or more, an individual is allowed to have an accessory dwelling building on that parcel. So if what they want to do is build another a dwelling building on that, they have the right to do it, which does not require splitting the five acres. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So I know many of you have come to these community meetings and I, you know, I, I so am grateful for the engagement from the Lake Avalon Rural Settlement. I want to just reiterate though the important piece that um, property rights are, are what we work with in, in you know, of this area, obviously the United States, Florida, um, which means that any piece of property owner can come forward with a request. And when they do that, there is a process that we engage and try to make sure that that process is to some extent predictable and understandable. Um, I think, you know, I've engaged staff about why it, their analysis, because I, the property owners had a request, they have the right to come up with a request, um, but the staff analysis, I think, is the concern that I'm hearing. And so maybe we can walk through the staff analysis, understanding that when we sort of break it down in those terms, looking at the future land use and what the, what's called for in laws, what that, um, what it's really articulated to be. Yes, Talk so I can go through a little bit how we review this. So basically, we get the application. I start doing some history on it, talk to the applicants, um, see where we're at, get some questions answered. Um, so we look at this whole area. I look at the future land use. Um, originally, we weren't going to touch the zoning at all, but um, we felt with this request to make it the most feasible, we wanted to make sure that if we did move from rural settlement one to five to one to two, that it would be required that the lots are two acres each to keep the integrity of that future land use and of this neighborhood. So let me go back. Okay, so that's what it is right now. Sorry, I didn't wanna leave it on the proposed screen. So for right now, we have not made a decision. Um, we're still reviewing it um, because planning and zoning is not until April 18th. We have some more time. But yeah, we do have to look at um, 
how this area complements the rest of the neighborhood. We look at the neighborhood, the land underneath, we look around, obviously we think about the whole rural settlement. Uh, we notify all of you guys, we look at um, the future land use policies, some of that of which I had up there. Um, yeah, and this one specifically, we went through a lot of talks. Um, and uh, so Jason Sorensen, the chief planner, um, I just want to say that, you know, we have the policies that we have to read and, and <laughs> interpret. And uh, the, the job of the Planning and Zoning Commission is to do the same, take our recommendation, interpret these policies, listen to, the, um, uh, to you all, if you all go to the meeting uh, to speak uh, against or for the project, and then the Board of County Commissioners, the same for them as well. Um, and speaking with the commissioner, um, it sounds like, um, just to back up one step, this, this rural settlement is a little bit unique from all the other rural settlements. Um, and, and listening to Laura talk very passionately about the rural settlement, um, it, it seems like it needs to be more protected than the other rural settlements. And so that's going to require, and, and, and what we will likely move forward with, is a text amendment to, to not allow for these kinds of applications. So we don't have to keep doing this every other month. Or so, so look forward to that. We don't know how the, the mechanism of exactly, we'll have to start looking into it. We have a lot of things coming up. Vision 2050, Orange Code, maybe it can be tagged onto that. We have a proposal coming to the Board of County Commissioners, a zoning in progress to not allow any zoning applications in the county because we have Vision 2050 that's forthcoming. So if that gets approved, then, then we won't have to worry about it. We can incorporate it with Vision 2050. If the zoning in progress does not get uh, approved and we can still accept applications, then we might have to move forward pretty quickly with a text amendment so we don't have to keep doing this. So, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Sorry, hold on. I'm going to come to you because they're recording. A1 and so you can put half, you know, a house on half an acre, and that's how you decide that, yeah, it's okay. It was really confusing. Yeah. No, so the A1 zoning, that they already have that. I agree. That already exists um, in that whole neighborhood, and um, that is a rural zoning district, but it does allow for half acre lots. So what we're doing, we're gonna keep the A1 zoning, but we're restricting it to they can only have um, two acre lots or more. So that way they can't make anything smaller. It has to be two acres or more. Are you saying that staff's recommendation? No, that's the rezoning application. But yes, we did recommend to the applicants. We said, we won't move forward with this. We need to have it locked in at two acres. Do you um, take into consideration that when, when you lot split out here and there's gonna be another building, that there's gonna be septic and they're going to be well, and that this property is right next to where the concert reclaims, um, the, and, the, and the impact on the whole reclamation of, of the concert. So that um, the septic, it's um, they'll have to comply with the health department rules and policies. It's not technically within our purview to consider those kinds of things. It's up to the policies that are in place through the health department, whether you know what kind of um, septic tank and, and whether or not they can do what they want to do because it does require a certain property size Jason, for a septic tank. Jason, I think that the, the confusion may lay in that this request is about a rezoning as opposed to an under future underlying land use change in the entitlement that... So there's two layers yes. associated with this request. The future land use layer, which right now the future land use is RS1 to 5. So what that means is for this 4.98 acre property, you can do one home. What they're requesting is RS1 to 2, so that means for this whole property, they can do, if, they, if this gets approved, they for this whole property do two units. Can you go back to the picture where there, it shows the house? Oh, yes. The aerial. Yeah. The aerial. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're still waiting looks on... like the house is in the middle of the property. Yeah. Yes, so we're so still you, waiting on a survey. The house down? We're still waiting on a survey. It's likely the line would probably be pretty close. We, yes. we don't have a survey yet, right. but we're waiting for yeah. it. But it so would, it would be the back and the, the, the side. Yeah, what's yeah. the easement? How many feet is it like from an existing mm -hmm. home? Like The setback, uh, I think for for the A1 district, I want to say it's like 15 or 20 feet from the, the, the side setback. We'd have to determine which is the front of the house. If it's the front of the house, then it'd be 25 feet, I believe. But, um, but I, I kind of want to finish my thought, if you could go to the RS1 to 2 mm -hmm. slide. So for this whole property, if this gets approved, for the whole property, it's two units. So then we have to look at the zoning layer for what they can do in terms of lot size. 
Now the zoning is A1, that allows half acres. So they could do half acre and then four and a half acres. We thought, you know, if this has any chance of getting anywhere, we want to make sure that if it does get approved, that at least it's two acres per lot. A1 does allow half acre. So you could have, if you have a 10 acre property, you could have half acre and then nine and a half acres for that property. Um, well, let's say if you have 20 acres, 20 acres, you could do two units. One unit could be on half acre, and then the other unit would be on the 19 and a half acres. Did, does everybody understand the difference between like the no, density and the zoning? Uh, I, I, I try my I, best. I, I go from five acres to a quarter. You're saying that one of the units can be <laughs> at low at a half acre. Yes. We're not saying that they can put 10 homes on no. the half acre parcel, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. You're just saying like the smallest amount of land right. for a unit right now on that zoning is a half acre and then the rest has to be and, and for another home. Correct. And the reason why we do that in the rural area, you see that a lot because it's A1 in the rural areas, they do that because they want their house on the half acre and then their farm on the other nine and a half acres for tax purposes. So that, that's kind of how that mechanism works. Uh, yes, ma'am. Why does that take precedence over yeah. the, the future land use of one for five? So it, 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 it kind of doesn't because for the whole property, that's what sets the density. So you still get the two units. It's at this, it why doesn't does, take precedence. Why does changing it because it's A1 into one for two take precedence over the fact that it's one for five and that half the property surrounding it is at least five acres and, you know, and, and the other half is one for two, but, but everything else. So it's kind of 50 50, and now it's just going to degrade the rest into smaller parcels and smaller parcels, which goes against everything that's written in our, our rural settlement documents. And that's why we need the text amendment to clarify and to really to protect this rural settlement even more so that we don't keep getting those applications to have this spreading and of the one to two. What is that? Is that something that's in the works? It, it is now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take to? to uh, well, it takes uh, four public hearings um, because we have to do the two public hearings for transmittal, then we have to come back and do the two public hearings for adoption anytime you change the comprehensive plan. So it can take a while. It could take uh, probably at the fastest rate, um, six months. Yeah, six months. It seems like you guys are putting a lot of kind of credence to the fact that the ones on the side of them are one to two parcels. How long ago was those made one to two parcels? Those, those were since the beginning of the rural settlement. Right, so it's not like it's something that they were there. Well, they were very well. Yeah, so that to me should not shouldn't take a precedence in it if that was something that was grandfathered in. I mean, that's it's almost like well, these are one to two, these are one to two, so we'll let this one. But it's that's a grandfather thing. Yes, sir. I think I can clarify. Okay, please. What, what yes. you're trying to say. What I. What I understand you is trying to say is that right now it is one to five. With the opportunity for a person who had that five acres to ask for the right to put a house on a half acre and have that be residential zoning and have four and a half acres remaining as agricultural zoning for tax purposes. If it were to be split without changing the zoning, if we were to go through a future land use map change, and approve a uh, one to two, or one to two and a half, whatever you want to call it, um, and you were to leave the underlying zoning, then you could still have a half acre house lot and then have the balance of that two and a half acre parcel be agricultural. By restricting it to a one, what you are saying is if the future land use map is approved, which is not guaranteed, then Conditioned on that would be an elimination of the half acre zoning and it would be required one to two. So there would only be, there would be zero agriculture on the property and just a house lot. And I think that's been the source of confusion here is that people are hearing half acre zoning and saying 10 houses. And that is not what you mean, but I think that's what's getting hurt. Okay. And so I want to try and help people understand, help you understand what you're talking, what the group is understanding you're saying. Yeah, just because the A1 allows half acre doesn't mean on a five acre property you can put 10 units because the density, future land use, sets the overall density. So, so that they're changing both, but you have to look at both layers to see where you land. In, in they terms are of, asking. They are asking, yes. 
so they could only put two units if it got changed right now they can only have the one house that's on it that's what we're doing uh, yes ma'am say that again so right now they can only have one home on it because the lot is sorry they can only have one home on the property right now because it is a five acre property so they have one home so if we change it now the most they would ever be allowed is two homes on this five acres that's what we're getting at and then restricting the zoning is just to ensure that those lots will be big and keep the integrity of two acres just to ensure we don't go any smaller than that Every five acre parcel is going to be subdivided. Do they have a compelling reason to want to split this lot other than just to sell off property? Because why would we all do that? I could use it. <laughs> She's asking if I have a compelling reason as to why we want to split the lot. Because I actually don't need uh, those two acres. I, didn't, I never even walked on them. So I feel like I, I could get rid of them or build another house for myself. You're still going to have two houses, but it's not going to change to make it two houses. He would, yeah, he would still. Another house, another house still be the same address, but it's not going to split the land. You can build a dwelling. Well, yeah, sorry. Yeah. It looks like the house is on the inbound lot. How does he get access to his house when he sells to get the lot off? The the front entry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Off, can we get you on? Can we? Because that's a really that's, great question. Yeah, that, it's not. It's not what he wants. At the end of the day, he just has never stepped foot on any of that property. So he's, you know, at an age now where he sell just and move to a two acre. Lot. Yeah, he doesn't want to sell his home either. So, so, so the answer. So. Yes. Okay. So to so answer your question, it'll likely, question, yes. we, don't, we don't have a survey yet, but it'll likely be a strip of land, probably maybe that comes back here to a lot, to this lot. So you'd have two driveways up here, one goes to this lot, and then a strip of land that goes to the, to the back. Yeah. Like, will that will change the size of the lot? Well, the, per the restriction that's proposed on the zoning, they'll each have to be two acres total. Um, okay. Yes, ma'am. There was somebody else that had a question. Nobody? Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. So you, you asked a question. I wasn't responding to that. No, <laughs> does anybody have a question? Do you? Well, I have a comment. Okay, sure. Yes, <laughs> God, I appreciate. I appreciate where you're coming from. But now, if we do this, then every person that has five acres or more lots, because they don't want it anymore, can start subdividing and selling it off. And I'm going to go and say, is our commissioner still here? Do you serve we the people, or are we here to serve special interest individuals? God bless you. I don't wish you any. It's okay. You can say whatever. You it, need to but I'm just saying this is a special interest, yeah. individual request. It's not consistent with the community's desires. And if you're here to represent we the people of the rural community, please listen to we the people. Yeah, anybody else so was it taken into consideration just the recent uh, rezoning request that just came in like a month ago when they tried to split 
five acre lot to two lots and that was denied was that taken into consideration I, did you know about the other property out they didn't even know about that application no, no, no. that application was withdrawn if anybody didn't know yeah they're selling it <laughs> so it wasn't denied, it was withdrawn. It was withdrawn. But it was going to be denied at the council commissioner meeting. Um, so so I, I think this meeting was good. We, we have a path forward. Um, hopefully uh, we can not have to do this every other month because it does seem like a pattern that's that's kind of being created here. Um, so does, if, if anybody has any more questions, comments, we'll stick around. Um, One more question. When an applicant comes in and puts something in, said it's already like two stages in and you know it's here in this rule settlement do you go pull the rule settlement because I mean, we spent a long hard time getting us into a rule settlement because i've always always asked my wife we've been doing this and we take a little bit of money from the homeowners 30 bucks a year and it goes to lawyers all the time and why do we have to do this every time someone wants to do it i understand everybody has the right to do it What's the use of having a rule settlement if y'all don't go look at it first? Well, it, we have we have to process it. If they submit it, we have to process. We can't it. deny anyone. We, we do, and, it, the, the, and that's what we need to, to amend are the bylaws that say that we can't take an application for these types of requests. Do you need um, to counsel people as to what you know? We we sir, we we do yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, we do. I do too. If I have a chance to talk to an applicant before you know anything is filed, I say, you know, please go back and watch any of the other hearings with similar requests, so you'll understand how these things have been evaluated in the past, what the outcomes have been, what this community really kind of goes through on a pretty regular basis. I think after this one, I even m may have sent a tersely worded email, potentially. <laughs> yes, you did. But it was, but it was because. In all fairness to the applicant because i think that they also this time is precious for them and they need to make their plans and this community has been pretty clear about the importance of the integrity of those future land use maps stop getting distracted on the zoning folks those future land use maps are the thing that's where the rub is and you know so so we're that's when this text amendment potential you know conversation came from to try to figure out how we can button down the the existing documents where staff has all the tools they need because i do think that there's there's a, a lapse there right we understand that the rural boundary conversation is continuing to happen uh, the state preempted our charter review commission from putting it on the ballot um, i have made it very clear that if the board of county commission would put it you know to something they want to discuss and you know make it a, the rural boundary part of it we can do it as a commission that that is something I support. Please continue to stay engaged on that. Um, anytime you talk to a state lawmaker, tell them to stop squashing local government. We come to these meetings. I come to these meetings. I have yet to run into my state counterpart at any of these. They're afraid of us. They're not. Well, good. That's good. That's a good thing because they need they need to understand that those local issues and local control is critical. Right, a comprehensive plan comes from you know, years and years of these types of engagements and understanding what the needs and goals of a community are in place making. So I think it's something important to stay involved in that, that process. And when um, we have the ability to come back out with a text amendment, we're gonna do that. We wanna stay focused on this case right now and make sure that our applicant has all the rights available to them under the law. And then um, I believe Jason is, do you know if the, um, just so I can make this a quick PSA, if the, um, Designation. Preservation. Preservation. Oh my gosh, my brain Preservation just went. Preservation district. Preservation. Is that going to be on the next BCC? That's on the next one. Okay, there we I go. I have the work not so I have to find out. Okay, it's, oh, on, it's the next on the next one. one. Okay. Yep. So the next BCC, there will be actually um, a discussion item that I brought forward on preservation district that your uh, HOA has advocated for and that will potentially not it doesn't affect this type of application but what it does is it assists if there is a potential annexation and we're seeing a lot of those piecemeal annexations in areas and knowing that you you know you really do border um, municipal governments that it, it looks like a really appropriate use for a preservation designation so we're gonna that'll be on the next BCC next Tuesday yeah. did we just do one mm -hmm. just do did we just, uh, <laughs> um, can I just make one clear clarification yes. to y'all 
Um, if you all are not receiving the AHPOA4 at yahoo.com emails, please sign up. What Commissioner Wilson was referencing is in the 11th hour, a one, one sentence was stuck into uh, Senate Bill 1420 that stated that they, they overruled our, our uh, self uh, government or our, our self yeah, they, uh, yeah. they preempted any they preempted the ability for us and I've been working on this since May the rural boundary amendment that was going to go on the ballot for for assistance with giving it another layer of protection for somebody who wanted to come in a rural area to build subdivisions they would have to qualify at a higher standard okay so we sent out an email that said, please call Carolina Amnesty and tell her to vote against uh, SB uh, 1420. And that's what she was referencing when she said we, that now this has to go to the county Yeah, so it was, a, it was a, an amendment, very late, a late yeah, addition to a bill. Um, I guess gotta, I got to make sure I'm giving a shout out there because I said your local delegation, Geraldine Thompson, was the one no vote yes, in the Senate. Geraldine Thompson was the single no vote in the Florida Senate. Um, that the idea really it, it's going to impact not just the rural west but the rural east and uh, for those of you that have been in Florida for a long time which I know a lot of you have you know that Seminole County has a rural boundary and they've actually been able to uphold even court cases that were that potentially challenged their rural boundary so it was the model that that this group was really trying to um, work off of knowing that it had been upheld in court so it's a really big disappointment, but we're going to continue forward, you know, and and trying to make sure that there's something predictable and understandable for you all. We have a couple of hands yeah. up over here. They feel that realistically, the, the uh, local government is able to be bought, and that's the kind of thing we're looking at. So it's really important that as an organization, we keep up this type of showing at any of these meetings, and please get behind these efforts to be able to make sure that others who are coming in beyond the lot splits are going to also meet the same kind of opposition. I, w so, I would like to say something yeah. if possible. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not the property owner, my father is. I've just kind of been helping him with the process because he's older. Um, and one thing I can say is from the beginning, everyone has been more than helpful. Never once have I heard that this wasn't something good to try to do. Like I understand it's our right to put in and do everything, but I have not heard anything negative like what I'm hearing here right now. And I like the people that they were about to not approve, like I had no idea of any of that. And had I had that information to share with him, we may or may not be here right now. I, I don't know. I'm just keeping it real with you. Um, so that's so maybe in the future, if someone's I trying to do it, just deter excellent. them. So, and I just want to clarify because I, I, because money, a lot of money goes into it as well. That's you know, right. He's, yeah. So I, I want to clarify. When, when I said earlier, we do talk to people. I, I talk to people, and we don't even get their application because I say, look, you don't apply for one to one out here. Okay, it's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> So for her, if this request, this one's kind of new to us, just like the previous request on, you know, when you look around, it's got two acre lots. Um, so this one's a little bit unique. And then the other request that um, we've received. Sir, you had a question? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there's one, there was one I was gonna say behind, back to behind you too. Hi, I'm Gerald Higgins. I live in uh, 7018 Old Greenfield Lane, Independence. I come to a lot of these meetings. A lot of people may not know me. Commissioner Wilson works very hard 
not only for her district, but for the whole county. I record on my loop at home, channel 488 Orange County TV. See not only the commissioner's meeting, see all the other planning meetings. See the discussion, see the votes, go down there. Do not just email Commissioner Wilson, who is now the vice mayor. Email the mayor, email the other five district commissioners and let them know what your opinion is and get it out because Commissioner Wilson is just one vote. There's six others and sometimes she doesn't win, okay? So we have to be strong and we have to be united. They need to be dragged here. Thank you. <laughs> and then you had a question, right? Oh, perfect. Very good. Yes, yeah, so you all were on the same page. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, this one is a learning curve for us. Um, but again, you're not seeing the requests that, that, that come to us and that aren't getting to you. So just please understand that. And, um, and hopefully there won't be any requests coming to you um, if we can do this text amendment. Um, so, um, no, it's just like, you know, phone calls or pre-out meetings. Um, it's, it, well, if it, depending on the timing of it, you may not. It, you know, if we can get something in place, then maybe not. Yes, can I ask you a huge favor? Yeah, sure. So, before the pandemic, when Bailey, Sean Bailey, or I think that was his name, was in, every person that wanted to do anything in this rural settlement said, Sean told me to call you, gave me your name and number. In the last month, I have gotten three prospective buyers, well, two prospective buyers and one who bought and then decided to ask me if he could do what he wanted to do, and I said no. But I had the opportunity to speak with them, and they told me, flat out, I was given your name and number by the person I talked to in planning. They said to call you. I have been asking because just like what J um, Jacob and Rosanna just said, if we have an opportunity to educate them, and I know this stuff inside and out, as you well know, that I have an opportunity to talk to them and to explain to them what a rural settlement is, what our specific rural settlement, the one to five, et cetera. And two of the folks said, I am so glad I called, thank you, and they never put an offer in. So, um, of course, the minute I saw this application, because you and I had talked about it, and then you know my response, um, but <laughs> it would be very helpful, and I am really okay with it if there's somebody that is looking in the rural settlement to give me a call. And I really appreciated whoever it was because they told her, well, the, the, the lady that, had, anyway, they told her that she was not allowed to tell them who handed her my name and number. <laughs> I don't really care who in planning handed her the na my name and number, but I am very willing because what we do is we try it anytime we see a for sale sign, we pick it up, what do you know about rural settlements? Let me explain this to you, blah, blah, blah. To try to keep everybody on the same page. So I'm just asking you, if you want to give my name and number out, feel free to do it. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, well, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, we'll stick around if you have any other comments or questions. But.